apologies for um, my two week absence, but I am back now. And also apologies for this. Uh, it's for a good cause. I'm doing the Movember charity sponsored thing over here in the UK where you grow a tash for charity. It's for men's cancer. Uh, my dad passed away last year because of cancer. So I'm doing it for, for him, poor old boy. And I think it's just, uh, you know, I look ridiculous. But sometimes I look I, I look weirdly sexy. It depends which way you look at it. I'll put a link if you want to sponsor me. But um, this is a YouTube channel about film reviews. So I'm not expecting you to, of course. But you did ask, so I'm telling you why I've got the tash. So, yeah, I had a couple of weeks off. Uh, I have watched lots of films, obviously, because I'm still off work. Uh, probably on about two films a day, trying to mix up the weird and wonderful with the normal for my wife. And uh, so this will be a mixture of weird and wonderful normal films that you may have missed completely and films that I think it's about time you revisited. So uh, I'm going to start off with a very, very unusual Russian film with the provocative title, Why Don't You Just Die? There we go. Directed by a guy called Kirill Sokolov. I read that. Uh, made in 2018. And this director is definitely one to watch. He is, he's wearing his influences on his sleeve very, very clearly. Tarantino, um, Danny Boyle, Shades of Shallow Grave. Um, he's mixing violence, in some cases quite extreme, with comedy, with um, a very unusual off-kilter score. The pace is frenetic, the editing is dizzy, the camera work is unbelievable, the colour palette is fantastic, the performances are good. It's maybe a little bit too crazy for most um, normal people, but to me, it, it almost blew me. How this came out of Russia, I have absolutely no idea. But I mean, who cares? Just enjoy the dizzy ride. Um, the Arrow release is, has got a nice booklet with it, which is um, always a, a bonus, really nice booklet that you get with the, if you can get the first edition. I've had this on my shelf for quite a while and I just thought it was about time I checked it out and I'm glad that I did. So yeah, check out Why Don't You Just Die. Once again, I'm not going to tell you anything about the plot, but I'm just going to encourage you to watch it. I also watched for the very first time a film by the very, very talented director, Darren Aronofsky, a film from the year 2000 called Requiem for a Dream. I have absolutely no idea why I haven't seen this before. It makes no sense at all that I haven't, but, and you know, we all, we all sin. But um, main reason I watched it because I know it's coming at 4K soon. So I thought, well, let's look at the, the, the Blu-ray that I've got, look at the transfer that I've got and check it's, um, it's up to standard. It was a really, really good, really good transfer, normal Blu-ray, American Blu-ray. So I'm not sure I'm going to reinvest in the 4K, but uh, it was um, a film that completely blew me away, to be honest. So it's, it's about drug addiction. So it's not, it's not fun and games. But it does deal with the, the subject of drug addiction from a kind of different ages from an older lady, um, well, the, the mother and the son both have drug addictions. Um, the, the, the guy's girlfriend is also addicted, his friend. So there's a whole circle of addiction going on. But it's showing the, the, the terrible evil of drugs from all different viewpoints, which is uh, not, a, not a bad thing, I guess. So if, if it is a film that helps people to lay off of drugs, then... Uh, we can't complain but the the film really is to me was all about the camera work and all about the um the effects in some way to split screen the close-ups the the use of camera technology it was just um absolutely incredible the use of music it's just a real film buffs film a real director's film a real auteur kind of film and um i know darren Aronofsky has, has gone on to great things with Black Swan and Mother, um, maybe not Noah, but this is one of his early films. And for a director who was obviously quite young when he did this, it was just incredible. Um, and it's just, um, it's kind of what is strange and what I liked about it as well. He uses, 
uh, it's maybe a bit strange to hear this, but he uses euphoric music set against a depressing backdrop of drug addiction. And I think when directors use music in a slightly off center kind of way that I really love that. But the, the combination of the, the incredible camera work and the, um, the use of um, the music made it a real cinematic experience. So um, I just, if you haven't seen it, um, well, you probably have seen it. So what I meant to say, if you haven't seen it recently, I'd maybe check out and get the 4K version. Um, but if you haven't seen it ever, then you know you're you're as bad as I am. But it's a, for a film buff, it's one of the greats, one of the great films. I would say. I would say it's a masterpiece. There we go. I've said it. It's a masterpiece. Okay, so I discovered probably one of my favourite directors of all time, literally a couple of months ago. Uh, once again, you know, you, some things drop off the radar, and uh, Pedro Amaldivar dropped off my radar um, for whatever reason. I don't think I've seen any of his films until two months ago. And I'm going through the filmography at the moment. I need to do like a top five, I think, of Pedro Amaldivar films because he is an absolute master. Totally, wildly original. Um, his use of colour and colourful characters and storylines, crazy storylines and Hitchcockian kind of plot lines together with the way he depicts love um he's he's just wacky and he's it's deranged sometimes but it's just it's just completely original and fantastic and i watched a film called one of his early earliest works called women on the edge of a nervous breakdown uh, from 1988 which uh, is actually more of a comedy uh in fact it's kind of a like screwball comedy um based on the, the American kind of screwball of comedies of the of the forties, and the film breezes along, and it's um it's got the usual kind of incredible array of characters, um and the, again a, the use of color is always very important, and the the set design, the costume design is fantastic. Not it's not my it wasn't my favorite um, Pedro film for sure, and it, I know it's one of his most famous, and that's probably that's why I'm, I, I left it till to watch at the end. And the transfer as well was fantastic. I watched the Criterion, uh, American Criterion edition. I mean, they're just, their transfers are just unbelievable. I sometimes wonder will they, if they did it in 4K, we'd know it's a difference, to be honest. But yeah, I mean, it's only a couple of... Um, All About My Mother's also been released on Criterion USA. And um, Women of a Nervous Breakdown is the other one. I think there might be a couple more. Talk to her, maybe, um, which is another great Pedro film. So, yeah, I mean, if you haven't discovered Pedro Amaldemar, and I'm sure you most of you have, but it's worth going on a bit of a filmography odyssey and checking out as many of his films as you possibly can. If you subscribe to Mubu um, channel, then um, I think a lot of his films are on there. That's how I got into it, by, by watching watching it on the Mubu channel. So I decided to pick this up off the shelf and give it a whirl because... Uh, I did watch Hannah B. Fireworks a few weeks ago, um, directed by Takashi Katana, starring the great man himself. This BFI set has got um, three films, Violent Cop, Boiling Point and Sonatine. Of course, lots of special features and extras and the obligatory booklet, I'm always a sucker for. Oh, with pictures as well. So I thought I'm gonna try Sonatine, um, made in 1993, because I think that's one of his more famous films. And um, I remember when I, f back in the 80s, uh, I think it was the 80s, when I first watched a couple of this guy's films, I remember being impressed by the the, the character that he plays, a deadpan gangster. Lots of swagger, lots of uh, coolness, but it's a vague memory. And I was a different place then. I wasn't really watching art house and indie films back then. So I remember being impressed by that, but I don't remember being impressed by the film totally. So um, it was a, I wanted to revisit this guy. And Sonatine is, I mean, I'm still processing it, to be honest, after watching it a few days ago. It's one of those films that it starts off kind of what you expect, the trademark um, deadpan sort of... Uh, violence and um, 
the gangster story and it's very much like um, a lot of films that I would associate with this guy. But then it takes a very sharp left uh, or, or right turn into a very, very different uh, genre, comedy um, and drama as well. And it's just a real mixed bag after that. It's, um, again, I'm not going to say anything about what happens, about the plot. Just to say, if you want a film that is a, of the gangster genre, but is also melding other genres in, and you want something that's a little bit different, then this is the film for you. It's, it's very, very, very original. Uh, and I can't recall a film that treated the subject like this ever, ever. And I think it's a sort of film that I'm probably going to study and watch and maybe look some more reviews because it's just a you know it's one of those films i say many times there's a lot going on in this movie uh, because you have got um you know you've got it's a thriller it's a drama it's a comedy is there social commentary in there probably but you know you don't know but one of those movies that you can probably study and um it is um a great great film so i would I'd definitely recommend it if you can catch it and it will, this isn't you know particularly expensive um probably get it you know for 20 30 pounds now if you shop around it's definitely worth picking up the box set if you want to check out this guy's work okay so i managed to pick up uh this little beauty a german media book from amazon germany on a three for two deal oh my word and uh it's kind of okay it's all in german but just who cares it's got this lovely artwork and pretty pictures and it's very nice and gorgeous so let's not worry about small things like not able to read any of it but the big brucey bonus is it is in, it's in 4k i didn't know this film existed in 4k i bought it an american import um on blu-ray like weeks and weeks ago and then, then i found this on a free for two and i was no brainer uh, yeah, Oz Perkins, big fan of Oz Perkins. I was introduced to Oz Perkins by a guy called Dimitri Krauss. He's got a YouTube channel. Um, he's um, He recommended a film called February, Black Coat's Daughter. I watched it. I wasn't sure about it. And then I realised that it was almost a masterpiece when I watched it again. Um, so the, he's the king of slow horror. Um he cemented this with another film that I saw called um, We Are The Pretty Things That Live In The House. I think it's called that anyway, sorry. Um, but very similar kind of um, genre drama film. But this this film, um, I mean, I think with um, Oz Perkins, he, this guy's got a masterpiece in him. And this was almost a masterpiece. Maybe when I watch it again, I'll, I'll give it the full five-star deluxe masterpiece. Um, premium Blu-ray seal of approval, but I think, to be honest, when I when I was watching this film, uh, the story, even though I think it's pretty good, was over there somewhere. I was interested in the the photography, and the camera work, and the beautiful moody synth score. It just looks fantastic, and especially in in four K, um, and I found myself just chewing up the scenery and th and looking at oh look at that that shot wow and like every shot was a painting you know it felt like that and i think it's one of those films that when i watch it again i'll probably take more notice of the actual story it's loosely based obviously on the grim brothers fairy tale but um i mean it's it hasn't got great reviews i noticed which is interesting but i'm not surprised i mean it's if you want a film that's going to be you know, lots of jump scares and it's going to like follow the normal horror um, formula, then um, I guess this isn't for you. But if you are if you are a fan of artistic cinema or, you know, cinematography and looking at beautiful images, then this is the, this is going to be a film that probably you're going to like. Um, so, yeah, I mean. Gretel and Hansel, one of the best films that I've seen this year for sure. It's made in 2020, so it's it's not it's not very old. Uh, look, can't wait to watch it again. And if you can, if you have got a 4K TV, then you need to pick up the 4K version uh, on the Amazon Germany site or wherever you can get it from. Yeah, amazing, amazing. Okay, so I got round to watching a film which I knew very little about uh, called Sea Fog. 
I bought it because it, I tend to buy a lot of Korean films because it's very hard to to find bad Korean movies. Um, and I did not know it was written and produced by Bong Joon Ho. So that was a that was a bonus because obviously he's one of the masters of Korean cinema. And um, yeah, again, still like another film that I'm still processing. I watched it with my wife and, and I thought this is going to be like a, I think she'll like this. It's just going to be a standard Korean thriller, I think, um, based on the fact that you got some guys who go out into sea. Um, I'm not going to say what, what happens, but um, the they get into trouble on, on this boat and, you know, it turns into a, you know, standard thriller. That's what I thought anyway. And it starts off with the first half an hour, that kind of scenario. Um, and then, to be honest, uh, all hell lets loose. The sea fog rolls in and everything goes completely, completely crazy. Uh, I can't tell you what happens or makes it go so crazy, but uh, you need to watch it to find out. And I'm, I recommend that you do. But suffice to say, it does get very, very dark. Um, it does, similar to Snowpiercer, it has a lot of social commentary, um, but it also is a film that um, you really have no idea what's coming next. And even to the point where you kind of think to yourself, it's got 15 minutes to go, where's it going to go? And it, it goes somewhere you don't expect it. it it's not a, it's not a, it's not a five star film. It's not a masterpiece. It's not a fantastic movie. It's just a movie that you, you need to watch if, if you're a Bong Joon-ho fan. I think for starters, um, and I think it's a movie that you need to watch if you like something that's going to be very different from the norm. So, and those are sort of films that I recommend on this channel for sure. And uh, yeah, I think it's available from um, 88 Films, which are a, a UK label, very cheaply. Probably get it for like seven or eight quid on eBay, I would think. But um, yeah, definitely watch it if you can. Okay, so another embarrassing admission on my part of films that I haven't seen that I should have done. I think the main reason I haven't seen this film is because I own the um, Plain Archive premium box set. Go over to my Instagram channel, Instagram channel, Instagram page to see uh, beauty shots. But um, I unboxed this this week and I sat on my sofa it was a cold winter's day outside. I put a blanket over my legs. I got a cup of tea. I sat down nice and comfortable and a warm and cozy, a nice mug of tea. And I watched this film called Patterson. And you know what? That's exactly the way you need to watch this movie because it is the most charming, beautiful, wonderful film I've seen for a very long time. It just makes you feel happy and makes you feel like... The movie was just made to make you feel good. It's just a depiction of a normal guy who's a bus driver, who also likes to write poetry, who loves his girlfriend, worships his girlfriend, does anything for her, comes upon people in his day to day, just like very like, hey, how you doing? You okay? Yeah, I'm okay. How you doing? I'm oh, not so good. Normal conversation. Um, but, and it's, almost impossible to explain why this film is so wonderful but it is just kind of the director Jim Jamush if you pronounce it well, again I haven't seen hardly any of his films to my shame but he just has a knack of sucking you in to this very normal banal word but also making it very interesting and making it very um, identifiable and you know Adam Driver gives a fantastic performance and I guess a lot of the film is 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 about the way that he um, carries himself in this movie but it just kind of um, it's actually if I think about it and talk about it too much I'll become very pretentious and very like gushy and probably start crying um, because it's got that sort of um, had that effect on me and it's just the film evokes a, a feeling that I've never really experienced for quite a long time when watching a film and that and that feeling is kind of quite a difficult thing to explain i'm floundering but that's great because you know when you watch a film it's hard to explain and you love it and it just it's emotional um then that's that's a good thing uh, and once again i'm sure that most people watching this channel have seen this have seen this film um but 
I mean, just watch it again, for goodness sake. Or, you know, if you're going to, if you haven't, then, then you need to. Yeah, Patterson by Jim Jamoosh, fantastic, fantastic stuff. Very quick update on some pickups that um, hopefully will be seen reviewed in this channel quite soon. I won't say hardly anything about them, but um, I think a lot of people have picked this one up, the Painted Bird. No very little about it, other than it's very, very long and very, very black and white and very, very depressing. So right up my street. Uh, and a film from, I think, from Korea uh, called The House of Hummingbird. It's the American release of a lovely, lovely embossed slip, which was a real bonus. I love it when that happens. So that was really good. Got that from um, the States, The House of Hummingbird. Look forward to watching that. A film I got from Amazon Germany for six euros, and no idea why, because it's a new one. Uh, an art house hit, 2019, System Crasher, which um, about a nine-year-old girl who is completely out of hand. But that's really, really good. Looking forward to that. I also got a one of my holy grails. I've been waiting for this for a long time. Jaya Shanki. Oh, my pronunciation is not good box set with a, a booklet uh, from Arrow Academy. Um, it's got the film Touch of Sin, one of the greatest Chinese films of the last few years. Uh, Mountains May Depart, one of the greatest Chinese films of the last few years. And 24 City, which I've never heard of and never seen. But um, this director is a life changer. That's a bit strong actually, not a life changer. A life changer in, in, movie, to, in movie speak. Yeah, when I saw Back to back, I kind of saw a, t a touch of sin and mountains made apart. I was just like, ah, oh, this guy is amazing. So I loved it. And then I picked up this because, only because it was, again, a really, really cheap price. And it's got eight films in it. It was a mistake on Amazon, I think. I, it, it, I remember the price went up by £10. I've only seen The Wild Pear Tree, but I did rather like it. So... I'm going to have to sit down and, and watch and look at the artwork on these little digi books. Really lovely. Just nice little digi books. Uh, Uzak, Once Upon a Time in Anatolia, which is a famous film of Nuri Bilgi Ceylon. Oh, pronunciation. The one that I've seen, The Wild Pear Tree, uh, Winter Sleep, famous again, I believe. Kasaba, one of his early, early films. Clouds of May. But look at this, they're all beautiful, aren't they? And if it anything like a wild... Well, actually, I'm told that Wild Pear Tree is one of his... is not one of his best films. So I'm in for a treat. So, too bad this is just not available for the price I got it for, guys, anymore. But, um, you know, you've got to be quick. You've got to be quick to snap up these bargains. And if you're not working, you've got the time to surf the internet all day and, and see what, when the prices drop. So, um... One of the advantages not working, I guess. So yeah, that's it for this week, and um, I'm looking forward to uh, to sharing some more films with you uh, next week. I hope you won't leave it as long next time. Um, thanks for tuning in, and uh, like I say, if you want to donate to this monster, then I put a link on the uh, in the description box on the channel. Thank you very much. Goodbye.